This is the fifth and final section of chapter one, transportation problems. And this section is on linear programming. Now in this section, we don't need to actually solve the problem using linear programming, actually just formulate the problem and write down what our inequalities and what our rules are. Now, when we do this, the way that we write it down, the syntax that we use is important. So the way that I show you to write it, um, you need to make sure that you write something um, the same. If you miss things out, you can miss out marks. So the first thing uh, we need to do is to define our variables and we write down something like this. Let X sub I J be the number of units transported from I to J. So for example, if I wrote this down, I know that's going to be the number of units transported from A to B. If I wrote this down, this would be the number of units transported from X to C, for example. So if we're going to do that, we need to say, well, what can I and J be? So we need to write something like this. So where I is defined by, and then we'll use our set notation brackets. And in here, we'll write down what the supply points are. So that might be A comma B comma C comma D and so on. And also where J is defined as our destination point. So again, these are just going to be a list of letters and we'll get these from our transportation matrix from the headings of the rows and the columns. Now we can't have any um, negative uh, units transported from one place to another. So we also need to say that I sub IJ needs to be greater than or equal to zero. We could have no units tra uh, transported, but no negative ones. So this is our, and you don't need to write this down, but this is just our non-negativity constraint. So we do need to write that down. You'll remember from linear programming, that's one of the things you need to do is to write down on uh, non-negativity. The next thing we're going to write down is that the whole point of writing this down is because we want to minimize a cost. So the bit in brackets you don't need to write down. Um, so you'd write down, um, you don't need to write down the C equals pi in the brackets and C would stand for cost. So if you just wrote minimize, that's fine. And th then we'll write down how we arrive at our total costs here. And that's basically going to be um, each of ourselves times by um, the costs for each of those cells. And then all of these need to be subject to a series of constraints for each row in each column. So the sum of each row needs to be less than or equal to the, the supply for each row. And then the sum of each column needs to be greater than or equal to the demand for each column. And these can be written in a, a shorthand way and I'll show you in the example that we're gonna do. Example 13, formulate the transportation problem below as a linear programming problem. You must uh, state your decision variables, objective and constraints. So we state our start by writing this statement down. Let i, j be the number of units transported from i to j. And then we need to say what i is and what j is. So where i is in the set of, and we need to write down what the values of the, the set are. Now this transported from i to j. So the places that they're transported from, the place that has the supply of units are a, b and c. So they're going from a, b and c. And j is where they're being transported to and they're being transported to r, s and t. So I've now defined uh, my uh, decision variables. We also need to state non-negativity. Neg uh, um, 
and we need to say where x sub ij is greater than or equal to zero. Then we need to state here that we need to uh, minimize the cost. So you could just, you could write C or cost. I'll just put minimize costs or costs equal to, and that's going to be uh, three times by, and that three is here, three times by the number of units transported from A to R. So it's a bit tedious, we need to go for each one, plus three times by, so this is the cell to the left of that, uh, the number of units transported from A to S, plus two times by the number of units transported from A to T. Then we go to the next row, because all of this makes up the cost, plus four times the number of units transported from B to R, I think you get the idea, 2x sub bs plus 3x sub bt, and three more to do, plus 3x cr plus 4x cs plus uh, 3x ct. So the sum of each row needs to be less than or equal to the amount of supply. So I could write down uh, for this first row, for example, that uh, XAR plus XAS plus XAT needs to be less than or equal to 25. Now that's a bit tedious because I'm going to have to do the same for these two rows and the same for these columns. Now notice um, these three things here have all got A's. So we can use the summation notation and we could say basically it's the sum of um, all the X's that stay, start with A, but we're working our way through all of the J's and J's are R, S, T and the sum of those needs to be less than or equal to 25 because we know that j um, it is going to be like r s or t so this shorter summation statement is the same as this one here so we're going to be using this one here to shorthand because uh, we just want to speed up the process so basically what we're saying is the sum of all the things on the first row they all start with a but they finish with r s and t needs to be less than or equal to 25. Oh, we need to say that this is subject to these constraints. So subject to these constraints we're going to put here. Uh, next constraint is going to be looking at the B row. So that's the sum of X and then B. And then again, we're going through um, the different values that J could be less than or equal to 40 and then the third row the sum of x c and n j needs to be less than or equal to 31 so remember these are all going to be less than or equal to constraints here and remember these need to be greater than or equal to constraints down here so don't forget about that so we'll now do the same thing for each column. So first column. Now for this one, um, the first letter is the one that's changing. So we're going to put I and the second letter is going to be R. So this is basically the sum of the first column greater than or equal to 30. The sum of the second column. So I and then S is greater than or equal to 30. And then the very last one, I'll do that down here. The sum of the X's that start with I's but finish with T is gonna be greater than or equal to 36. So you should now be able to do exercise 1E on pages 30 to 31 of the textbook and then you can go for the mixed exercise.